everyone. Ron Gerber of Angel Beat. So excited to bring you Candace Bohannon, who is one of AWS's newly hired experts in AI and ML. We'll get into our background. I like doing these fireside chats, keep it a little bit more informal and interactive than a regular Angel Beat, more structured presentations. Candace is a rock star on the Angel Beat speaking circuit. And what I thought I'd do in this session is have Candace give a little bit of background on why she moved to AWS. She had great corporate jobs at Medtronic and 3M. And so as many of you are also looking at investing in AWS and deciding to move your existing on-prem infrastructure to AWS, that decision-making process and the importance of it is somewhat similar to the decision-making that Candace went through when she decided to leave the end user role at these major corporations and join one of their key suppliers. So I think that'll be interesting. I'll have her go into some definitions of some of the major areas that she works in. And then finally, talk about the way she can leverage her background as an end user, her knowledge of AWS, in deploying really cool and innovative solutions. So Candace, why don't you give a little bit of background to the Angel B community on your skill set, where you've worked before, and what led you to join AWS? Sure. So thanks for having me. I'm really excited sure. to be here. Um, but I, so I started my career at 3M, um, as you said, in Austin, Texas, and I worked in an R&D lab. And so this was a great um, kind of segue from college to, to the real world because it was still really focused on learning. And with it being 3M, there's a lot of in, um, importance on um, developing new stuff, innovation, intellectual property, and things like that. So that was my base for starting. Um, I also got into commercialization of products. I wanted to know that what I was building was actually going to help people. Sure, so that sure. was that was a thing that was really important to me. It was going to be in someone's hand, make hospitals safer and cleaner, those sort of things. Um, and then I also started to realize that I really like technical leadership. Sometimes um, the finishing of the product, you know, the the last 20 percent takes 80 percent of yep. the, the effort. Well, by that time, sometimes I get a little bit bored and I'm ready to do the next thing. So commercializing was great experience for me. I did a couple of different products there, um, but the technical leadership was really fun. I love planning. I love working with teams and those sort of things. So all of those sort of things I got to figure out about myself in those 10 years. I, um, I know uh, 3M, I mean, I'm most familiar with their post-it notes, and that's like the classic story of yeah. the 3M culture, embracing innovation, taking these ideas, and suddenly it's now a ubiquitous product. Exactly, and I love the story of the Post-it Note. Um, the creator of, of the Post-it Note, Art Fry, I got to meet him before, and he pushed that himself. So he was so passionate about it, he was giving it to the administrative assistants around 3M. <laughs> and it was an accidental discovery. It they were trying to make something very sticky and it was not so sticky. So I just love these accidental um, serendipitous ways that we can create innovation. So I love the 3M stories around innovation um, and how you can take software, you can take different things that you wouldn't expect and put them together and create something brand new. So I love that. Excellent. Yeah. And then, and then, you joined Medtronic up in Minnesota. Did did 3M transfer you up from Austin to their uh, headquarters in the Twin Cities? Yeah, so I did. I did about three years in the R&D lab, and then I moved up here to the Twin yeah. Cities, um, working in the healthcare group. and And I really, I'm passionate about healthcare. Um, my master's was around actually flu-like illness spread, very relevant the last couple of years. Right. Um, and I just, I love again. I really like to know that I'm helping people to to make their lives better. So that healthcare um, vein was always really important to me, which was why I went over to Medtronic actually. They're yeah. the leader in pacemakers, right? And so sure. I was a DevOps engineer there. So we'll get more into the DevOps and what does that actually mean, of course, but how can we go faster in such a regulated industry and keep our customers safe? Keeping the customers safe is always the most important thing, um, but we also need to get software out the door. So. Those were some of the the different turns that I took throughout my career that kind of led me here. I would imagine, and people always talk about mission critical apps. I can't imagine a more mission critical application than pacemaker software that has to work 
and there's no easy way to do updates as in, you know with AWS in the cloud or your software in your cars they just do an update over the air but mm-hmm. You're not you can tinker around with software and you better make sure you get it right in a pacemaker. Exactly. And so with DevOps, it's all about going faster, but it's also about making sure you dotted your I's and crossed your T's and you're keeping everyone safe and, and putting out the good software. So it went so I, I know now you're at AWS <laughs> and one of the things, as we discussed previously, you've got this great passion for AI and ML. And before we get into some of the work you're doing with some of your clients, maybe you can do a quick level set. I mean, I'm running all these tech events and I get a little bit confused. I wonder what exactly is the difference between AI and ML? There's Are they different sides of the same coin or what? And then there's all these ops things out there. So there's DevOps, as you alluded to. There's DevSecOps. There's GitOps. There's AIOps. There's FinOps. And I know you work and are passionate about ML ops. So I probably reeled off about like nine different acronyms and maybe not for everyone, maybe you could just describe and give everyone a level set for what these different acronyms mean in this world of ops and AI versus ML. And then we could finish this up when you can maybe describe how you're leveraging your knowledge of AWS your end user experience in deploying these solutions for now your AWS customers. Let's start with the definitions first. Give everyone a good level set. I love starting with the definitions. That's where we should always start. So first, I'm going to give a definition that's a little bit of a joke, and I wish that I could attribute it back to whoever said this. It was in a presentation that I attended at 3M, and he said, um, uh, machine learning is written in Python. AI is written in PowerPoints. So I think that's a little bit tongue in cheek, obviously, but what you can take from that is that AI is a little bit more abstracted, right? Um, it's, it's the ability for a computer to mimic human behavior, but it's a little bit higher level, right? And then machine learning is more of an application of AI where you, you write some code and you create a model to do something that looks like artificial intelligence. So. That's kind of how I differentiate within the AWS ecosystem. You know, we have where you can start at the bottom using your frameworks like TensorFlow and things like that and create those um, ML models that you want. But we also have AI services that are much more focused on a certain area. So if you want to have a chat bot, that would be an AI service where you can kind of um, train your your bot to understand the types of questions that your your customers might ask and things like that. So that's a little bit of the difference that how okay. I would discuss that. Mm-hmm. Got it. And maybe you could cover some of these ops acronyms and how they all differ. Like I've heard about ML ops and I'm not sure how it different from AI ops. I'm not sure how it differs from DevOps. Maybe you could touch on a couple of those. So I would start with DevOps, maybe because that's the first one I learned, but I think that was the first one altogether. And it really is bringing together the development teams and the ops teams. So what used to happen is the guys would would develop their code and and we would have something and then um, we would deploy it and push it over to the ops team who then has to maintain it and make sure it's staying up and all of those sort of things. So DevOps brings those groups together. So it's you you could also hear a lot of people kind of use um the the more letters c i c d um kind of synonymously with devops and so that's continuous integration continuous deployment and for that we need to set up a bunch of rules and automations around how we work together on code and how we can push that out so high level that's that's a beginning definition of devops i also really like devsecops because security is very important and it's also something that developers tend to not want to have to slow down to do security so if we can just integrate it in that whole process let me know out of like in whenever i check in my code that i hard coded uh, a secret or something in there that would be an application of devsecops okay so then ml ops is where I'm really excited to work because um, I've read a lot of studies recently that show we're spending a lot of money and putting a lot of effort into machine learning development, but only like 50% of models actually make it out to production. 
So we're spending all this money, like people in general are spending all this money, but not getting the value out of it. And so that's where MLOps tries to take some of these concepts that we have from DevOps, DevSecOps, and applies those to machine learning development so that we have the repeatability, scalability around machine learning development, just like we do with um, regular application development. So it's it's different. They're all a little bit different. Um, and we could go through each part of CICD and talk about the differences. Um, but just one one difference between MLOps and DevOps would be version control. With when you're saving your models, you need to save um, along with your, your Python or whatever code, you also need to save your data and your training job and your hyperparameter tuning tuning. So there's there's a lot more stuff that has to go into version control um, whenever we're talking about machine learning development. And as I'm trying to synthesize that and going back to your original analogy or 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 framework, I would imagine one of the key parties why you focus on ML ops. And as you said, ML is the Python, whereas AI is is a higher level. If you don't have the core modules around machine learning in place and done correctly, then you potentially have a problematic situation because if the building blocks of your applications, of your new programming, if that's not right, then everything else is not going to be good either. Exactly. That's the whole junk in, junk out sort of concept, uh, right? Yeah. So one of the things when you're out there and you're like me, not as smart as Candice, see, hearing all these buzzwords, sort of understanding it's confusing. The gist of it is, how can you basically make applications run better, faster, quicker, more secure? And how do you ensure that you can leverage some of the tools that AWS has so you as an end user, I'm just trying to simplify this, whether or not it's through whatever AWS service on any of these ops and AI, they're all enabling you to do your job better and focus more on the strategic architectural decisions. You've got experts like Candace who can upframe it so you can talk intelligently with your boss, your CIO, and what all these things mean, but you don't really need to worry about the definitions so much as you need to focus on the business problem and figure out the best way to solve it. And that's a great thing with the whole suite of AWS solutions, when you could call on people like Candace to say, okay, here's my problem. You know, we have to, we just bought this company. We have to integrate their solutions. So we're now expanding into a new country and we have to figure out what to do around data locality and governance issues and security and making uh, applications automatically translatable without any errors. I mean, all these kind of issues, you know, that's where you, you talk to people like Candace, who in her role can take advantage of her experience, again, as an end user and as an AWX, make it, make it happen. So maybe Candace, you could share without releasing anything confidential, some of the major clients you're working with, what are some of the projects that they're pursuing and what are some of the specific AWS services products that you're leveraging and how does that benefit clients? And hopefully it'll resonate with the people watching this. They'll listen to your comments and go, okay, that sounds like my environment or that sounds like 75% of my environment. I better go call Candace in the Twin Cities at AWS and have her talk with me. And again, through Zoom, Teams, Chime, there are lots of advantages to, even if you're not there in Minnesota, uh, to set up a meeting with Candace. So let's hear some of these stories. Yeah, so um, a thing that we hear again and again from our customers is some, some of them are just getting started with uh, machine learning and AI and things like that. So some of the engagements I've done recently are like, well, what, what does this mean? So some of the questions we've gone over here, how do I get started in SageMaker? Um, Amazon SageMaker is our, our main service for developers and data scientists to build, train, deploy, even monitor models um, that we push out to production, right? So how do we get started there? Um, sometimes 
um, it takes a, a subject matter expert to know where the value in the data is. And so we also have a lot of different services that are like low code and no code options so that a business analyst or um, just regular subject matter expert, maybe a material scientist as an example, could um, ingest this data and do some, some simple manipulation and get a model out that then we can throw over to the data scientist and they can start working with those. Um, but really the part that I really like to focus on, again, MLOps, is, is how do we deploy that model? How do we actually get over the hump and make it so that our customers are getting access to this value add within the model that we've spent so much time and money developing, right? So um, when, and when we start doing, talking about that, people get sensitive about their data and what it is that their models do. And so it's really important that we have the proper security set up around um, the, the model development environment within SageMaker. Um, that's questions that we get a lot of times. How do we make sure that this VPC where our stuff is running doesn't have internet access? Um, how do we make sure that this team can see this data and that team can see this other data? And then really interesting to me is how do we keep an eye on our model? Once we've deployed that model, how do we know that it's still running and still collecting the data that we expect it to and performing at the level that we expect it to? So those are areas where I really like to dig in um, and kind of help people come out of, I developed this thing on my machine and it works right here right now to like, let's get it out to our customers so that, so that someone can really get some value out of it. It sounds like a lot of your interaction with customers is less tactical where you're talking about how do you code this or what's the right language you have to use to create this. It seems like the real focus is much more strategic, architectural. What do you want to do? Tell me that. Let's sit down with your line of business colleagues if you're in technology. Tell me what's going on. And then I if I were in your shoes sitting in the meeting, can then share with you, okay, this platform or service works great. This one, yeah, you probably need in a year or two, but let's start here and making their life easier. I think, as you said, there's so many great tools where even if you're not a hardcore data scientist, you're not a 10-year Python programmer, you can do incredible things as so many general IT professionals through the as you said, through low code, through the power, I think they call it like uh, citizen developers can now do so much. Right. So, and that really speaks to why I wanted to come over to AWS. So it's really kind of um, moving up that value chain. It's almost like going from developer to architect and that change yep. there. But now um, at AWS, we help remove some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting that you're kind of alluding to um, and let people focus on their business problems. And I wouldn't say anyone can code, but coding is not the hardest part. The hardest part is figuring out the strategy and how do we make sure that our stuff is secure, working as it's supposed to. And so um, it's it's really fun job, very rewarding to get in there with all of various different customers and really help them as their technical strategic advisor to set out the, the um, path to really be able to achieve this and to keep their customers happy. Great. And the good thing is when you could meet with Candace, and she has many colleagues who share similar backgrounds at AWS, you're getting the additional perspective of how AWS has solved, if not the, the exact problem you're dealing with, similar issues, and you're not having to reinvent the wheel yourself, they can help accelerate your journey. I think another thing that I heard a lot about during some of our Angel Beat sessions is there's such a programming shortage, it's hard to attract and retain the top talent you need. The solution in many cases, and I, I've heard this from many people who say, it's fine, we'll keep all our people, they're gonna get promoted, they're gonna make more money because we're gonna make them into, our, as you said, the senior architects. We're then gonna bring on board AWS, so you know we'll spend more money with AWS, not worry about spending money on on new headcount per se that's hard to re forget about even if you get it funded how do you find the right person it's very challenging and we see many organizations say 
let me focus on my existing staff, promote them, reward them, and instead focus more on spending a little more or, or a lot more with AWS that will achieve the same benefits. And overall, what you end up doing is get a more financially favorable model, lower cost. You know, AWS can run data centers much more cost effectively than anyone else. And you have a much more flexible model. And the other benefit is people like their jobs better because they're not tied up in and it's like the old days when you first started cloud computing. People hated racking and stacking servers and plugging things in the wall and out. Now it's, you know, AWS takes care of it and does a really good job. And so uh, I think, you know, by, by working with Candice, it's also a, a very career enhancing move. That's what I've seen a lot. So sure. it's good. Excellent. Yeah. So do you get to travel around much, Candice, you know, now we're in post-COVID to meet with customers? Do you have any like, specific industries you try to specialize in, like healthcare, or what's what's on your radar in, in the near future? Yeah, so actually next week I get to go to Seattle. I've been mentoring an intern all summer, and that's been a lot of fun. I really get a lot of, um, uh, I just, I feel good about working with interns. I really enjoy working with new grads. Um, so I'm going to Seattle next week to see his final presentation. Um, and then I have another engagement coming up with a customer um, when I get to go to Virginia Beach. So I I am getting to travel again, and I'm really excited to be able to see people in real life um, and, you know, just get a better feel for how, how the presentation is going. Was there, was, is there someone in the room who's a little bit confused? Can I make sure that everyone is all on the same page? So. And it's probably good. You get to go visit. I'm sure you visited it before. You get to visit the mothership or yeah. the multiple offices that AWS has. Mm -hmm. get, get in touch with some of your corporate colleagues and get the inside story. Because as you said, it's the same reason why AngelBeat, like we love doing these virtual sessions. We like doing live events too. I'm sure it's very helpful when you're out there in Seattle, you're hearing the mentor's presentation. I'm sure you get a chance to meet some of the team that's directly building these ML ops and other solutions. And so that gives you more insights and background to provide greater value to your customers. Right. Absolutely. I love that engagement model, too, where we do have the product teams and other internal documentation where we can go and ask, well, why? We don't have this yet. Can we get this? My customer needs the thing. And so also playing the liaison that way has been a lot of fun. And sure. it's really neat to see um, what's behind the curtain in, in some ways. So that's great. Well, I look forward to seeing you in the Twin Cities. Maybe you'll have a big engagement in New York. I'll get to see you there. We do like doing live events, but we also like doing this digital content because we know individuals, you know, you can't really travel that much right now. There's yet another new COVID variant. Gas is $7 a gallon in some parts of the country. So, you know, these are all realistic issues that we all deal with while we still like it. You know, people are social individuals. So we do want to interact, but we still want to provide this content. And I think you know, it's so appreciated to get your insights, Candice. I guess the key takeaways for people who are listening to this, I think, you know, as I, as I summarize it, it's a couple of things. It's really good that AWS isn't necessarily just recruiting new graduates in, from computer science, isn't recruiting individuals who might work at other tech firms. They're recruiting people who have jobs like many of you and users. And I think as part of the one factor amongst zillions why AWS is successful is because they do bring in board people who understand the end user's perspective. And I think the other thing that is increasingly important, you know, again, from a strategic standpoint, as I mentioned before, I'm not as smart as Candace. I really can't exactly define all these various acronyms. Like when you meet Candace, she can. But the, the basic gist of it is all of you, when you're looking at your own personal careers, your roles, it's great to know that AWS has so many capabilities around applications. And in my simplistic view of the world, you know, there's infrastructure and there's applications in a very simplistic way. And you know, 10, 15 years ago, big emphasis on infrastructure. Now, it's still critically important, but a much more greater emphasis 
on applications and understanding them. And quite honestly, people understand applications and all the issues around application security and application performance and speed, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the people getting promoted. I think it's very relevant to hear Candace's comments that the tools that she works with that AWS develops help you develop and architect applications that add value to your company, that add value to your skill set and get you promoted and help your company do better. So it's 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 a win-win all around. Is there anything else you want to add, Candace? No, I think we've talked about so many great things. So um, I am very excited to continue working with you and hopefully great. be on one of your um, in real life speaking circuits that <laughs> hopefully will occur. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we look forward to that as well. So thank you very much. We appreciate this. I know on a final note, Candace is actively involved in promoting women in technology. So I'm always glad to feature an AWS expert who's not male because it really, you know, is consistent with AngelBlade's doing, trying to promote our own in some small way, diversity in IT. Absolutely. Thank you for that too. Yes. All right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Candace.